The West is afraid to transfer F-16s due to regular Russian attacks on Ukrainian airfields. Russia is knocking out Ukrainian aircraft and military airfields. Against this backdrop, the West has decided to slow down the transfer of F-16 fighters. Western partners are slow in delivering F-16 military aircraft to Ukraine because Russia is demonstratively destroying Ukrainian aircraft along with airfield infrastructure. This was stated by former spokesman for the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, Vladislav Zeleznev. According to him, the situation is aggravated by the lack of fortified hangars for aircraft at Ukrainian aerodromes. Why aren't all these structures built, especially since in some cases they don't require large financial investments, and some issues in terms of protection can be solved by using modular designs of protective hangars. However, this is not the case, which gives the Russians the opportunity to precisely destroy our very expensive and very valuable aircraft, he said. Zeleznev added that the Ukrainians are losing their MiGs and Su-16s in the hope that they will receive F-16s from their Western partners. The loss of airfields and aircraft may have been the reason for the delay in receiving the first batch of F-16s, Zeleznev believes. Russia has intensified the military pressure on Kyiv by stepping up airstrikes on its air bases. According to analysts, this pressure has been largely linked to Ukraine's imminent official reception of the first F-16 fighter jets, which Western countries have been promising to transfer to the country for many months. In the space of a few days, several large-scale strikes have hit Ukrainian bases, according to reports corroborated by both Russian and Western sources. First, at Mirhorod on July the 1st and 2nd in the Poltava region of central Ukraine and then at Dolgintsevo Air Base in the Dnipro region located 80 kilometers from the front lines, according to a July the 4th Russian Defense Ministry statement. Moscow claimed that at least six fighter jets had been destroyed. The Ukrainians have not denied these losses, although they have sought to downplay them. Ukraine will be able to destroy Russian aircraft if it receives South Korean missiles. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited Pyongyang for the first time in 24 years on June the 19th and signed an agreement with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Details of the agreement are unknown, but Kim said the two countries have a fiery friendship. Experts believe the agreement will lead to closer industrial and military ties between the two countries, which could continue Russia's large-scale war against Ukraine, Forbes reports. The South Korean government immediately responded to this agreement. The country's national security advisor Chang Ho-jin said that if Pyongyang supplies Russia with more weapons, Seoul could provide them to Kyiv. North Korea has not yet announced closer ties with Ukraine, but if it does, it is likely that Ukrainian officials will ask for the same types of weapons that Russia already receives from North Korea. Russia is known to have bought a batch of powerful KN-23 submarine-launched ballistic missiles from North Korea late last year and used them to devastating effect. If North Korea can sell KN-23s to Russia, then South Korea can sell Hyunmu series SLCMs to Ukraine, said Jeffrey Lewis, director of the East Asia Non-Proliferation Program at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey. It is not yet known whether Ukraine will ever receive the Hyunmu 2B. However, the US has already given Kyiv dozens of missiles from the Army Tactical Missile System, which have a range of up to 300 kilometers, but insists on their limited use. Washington allows Kyiv to target ATGMs at targets in Russian-occupied Ukraine, but not at targets in Russia itself. That means Russian frontline air bases that house dozens of Sukhoi fighter bombers armed with devastating glider bombs are out of reach, the report says. However, the Ukrainian military can strike these bases using UAVs, but light drones do not have enough firepower to destroy aircraft based at Russian airfields. However, with a few well-aimed ATGMs or other ballistic missiles, Ukraine could potentially disable the entire operational fleet of fighter bombers at the Malshevo airfield in Voronezh, the Ukrainian analytical group for intelligence in sight noted. However, this could happen if permission to carry out such a strike is received. Even without permission to strike on Russian territory, Ukraine could use South Korean missiles to good effect since there are many valuable Russian facilities in the occupied territories that could be destroyed, Forbes concludes.